The first big fight in Gears Tactics is against the Brumac. Now the Brumac is quite intimidating at the start, obviously it's massive um, and it can do some serious damage to you. The basic strategy is at, in the initial phase to make sure that you've got your two characters retained on either side. Don't position them too closely because if it stomps the ground or if it uses its chain gun attacks they have an area of effect and that means that your characters will, both of them will be damaged in, in, one, in one blast essentially. The other thing to do is to space them because these area of effect missiles will cause you to move two and that means you have less action points in order to attack. I've spaced these characters out as much as possible on the left so I can also get some different angles on these guns. Now the first thing to do is to ignore the tank on the back other than to use it to turn the Brumac around and to hammer one of the guns as much as possible. The priority is to remove one of those guns as, as quickly as you can. If the Brumac gets within sort of 8 meters of you, you need to make, which is kind of roughly about the intimidate range, so you can kind of gauge it, you'll get a feel for it, you need to move your character away with with the, the most urgency, that takes the priority, because not only can it stamp you out of cover, which is very damaging, but then it can follow you up with potentially two chain gun attacks, which can wipe your character out in one go. So, keeping your distance and attacking one gun. Once one of the guns is gone, you need to take off the second one. That is still your focus. If the Brumac's facing the other way, think about how you shoot at it with your, with your squad mates on either side. So don't use all of your shots straight away unless you've got a good, uh, unless you've got a good sort of hit point. You can use the team on the other side to turn the Brumac around if you need to. You will get an emergence hole within about three or four turns. With this, just make sure you allow it to open and then throw a grenade in as soon as possible. Make sure you have grenades for uh, proper grenades for one character on at least one of the sides. You won't get many emergence holes. They tend to just be after you've blown a gun off or after you've blown up one of the tanks. They tend to just spawn the wretches and sometimes you'll get enemies dropped in from above which will kind of swamp your character. They're all very very easily dealt with um, they shouldn't pose any of a threat other than an annoyance that takes up time. One thing I will say though is any of the missiles that the Brumac is going to fire, so the red circles, if any of those enemies are inside that don't bother shooting those enemies just leave them because the missiles will hit before they get their go and it will kill them. Okay, so we've got emergence holes sorted and we've done the strategy for the guns. Once the guns are off, the Brumac's basically just a, a walk-in bullet magnet. It can only stamp the ground and knock you back and damage you that way. So just make sure you keep your distance and take your time and consider each shot needs to be into the tank. Some of the really good strategies I found was making sure that you shoot from one side and then shoot from the other side once it turns round and think about who's got what ability. Gabe's really really good for healing your squad all at the same time so if you've taken a little bit of damage probably not worth worrying about massively because you can use Gabe's ability to heal everyone up at once if they do at all end up getting damaged. With Michaela the sniper you want to use try and get her positioned so you can use her two action point damage boost shot because that will pretty much tear through about half the health of a tank. You also want to try and then position your characters, instead of being two on each side as much as possible, you want to try and get the Brumac into the middle area and position them almost in a diamond formation. So if we're looking top down, you have one at the top of the screen, one at the bottom, one at the left and the right, roughly. It, it'll be hard to achieve that it, perfectly. That means that when the Brumac turns, sometimes it can be awkward and it can position itself so no one's got a shot if you've just got two on each side without you moving it means you can use more action points to attack it. This fight does take a long time so it's better to be, play cautious and be a little bit more risk averse because the fight's about 30 to 40 minutes. I will put up the whole fight if anyone shows any interest. Um, it's a very long process though of essentially luring it out and making sure you're not going to get damaged. The other thing worth mentioning is with the missile strikes, if you are at the very very edge of that missile strike it isn't going to touch you at all. So you can kind of, I mean, you can take the mickey with them and you can position yourself just on the outside of it so that you can hold your position as much as possible. Don't bother using any grenades on the Brumac, just save those for emergence holes and don't be afraid to use your pistol because your pistol will get you a better chance of hitting sometimes and you can use that to pull him around so other characters with a better angle or a better percentage chance of hitting can do some more damage. 
if you do find yourself swamped by wretches, the ones that get dropped in, don't forget the, your vanguards will have the intimidate ability which will remove the modifier uh, that means that they attack you as, a, as an opportunistic attack, which is really, really useful. And if you've got any spare action points that you can't use, just use them for a reload because that means that if you do get the opportunity, you can hammer them a little bit harder. Uh, you're in for quite a long fight, but it's a pretty decent fight and it really shows the scale of what's going on in Gears Tactics.